Thank you for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you would keep us from leaning unto our own understanding and lead us in your holy way. Use us for your glory. In the victorious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 through 5. Uh, and I'm reading the English Standard Version. That's 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 through 5. Verse 4 says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Our subject for today is perfected love builds an attitude of victory. Perfected love builds an attitude of victory. We are learning how to recognize maturing or perfected love in, within ourselves and our brothers and sisters. There are four indicators of maturing love. The first one we studied about was confidence confidence in God and not in ourselves. The second one was honesty uh, to others, especially believers. Uh, too often we try to mask who we really are and fail miserably. We, it, it, it will serve so much of a good purpose if we would just be who we are. And, 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 and a lot of times I admit to, to really be who we are would hurt a lot because we're so used to uh, masking who we are and especially on Sunday, acting like we're somebody that we're not, we're acting like we're mature, that's it. We're acting like we're mature Christians when we are not all that mature. At our best, uh, we are learning to be mature Christians and walk in the perfected love of of the Lord. Now, the third one was last week, joyful obedience. Not just simply being obedient, but joyfully being obedient. We can joyfully be obedient to our Heavenly Father because it's a family matter. And He lovingly cares for us, and we can lovingly and joyfully obey Him. And this week, the attitude of victory. Our attitude of victory is an indicator of how mature we are. Jesus has overcome the world and Satan and death to assure us of victory. There's a Greek word uh, that uh, for a Greek goddess, and the word is Nike, which also happens to be the name of a United States aerial missile. That aerial missile is designed when it's deployed and when it lands, it will get the United States the victory. Uh, both of them uh, are named uh, from a Greek word, Nike, spelled N-E-E-K-A-Y, Nike, which simply means victory. Have you ever noticed that the Nike plant here in Memphis that uh, uh, the whole Nike organization, they only use people that are winners, that are good at their sport, the best at their sports, and always come in victoriously or most of the time. Uh, but what does victory have to do with maturing love? Christians live in a real world and are plagued with tough obstacles. It's not easy to obey God, even though obeying God is easier than disobeying him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16 says, but without faith, and this is the key, to indicate or show that you have maturing love, to walk by faith and not by sight. Again, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God 
must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It's much easier to drift with the world, which is disobeying God, or to do our own thing, which is similar to uh, leaning to our own understanding. But the Christian is born of God. And this means that we have the divine nature of God within us. And it is impossible for this divi divine nature within us who is in control to disobey God. So if we would allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, then we would be much more obedient. And we, when we're more obedient, we can't help but to be more victorious. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. When Paul says to the Ephesians, but be filled with the Spirit, don't just allow, don't just be going with every wind and the direct, whatever way the wind blows, that's the way you go. But we should be led by the Spirit of God. When he says, but be filled, he's saying be led with the Holy Spirit, with the Spirit of God. And then Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Paul again is saying, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and don't make his job difficult. In other words, grieve is translated from the Greek word lupio, which means to make sorrowful. H have you ever uh, been given a job and someone is making it difficult for you to do your job? It makes you sorrowful. And, and, and when we don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, we make his job sorrowful. We grieve him. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, the New American Standard Version says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. If the old nature is in control of us, we disobey God. But if the new nature is in control, then we obey God. The Spirit of God was upon Jesus and led him into the wilderness to be tempted or tested of the devil. And in, when, whenever uh, the word tempted is used in, in conjunction or along with what the devil is doing, it's tempting, trying to pull us away from God. And when it's used in connection with God, it's tested. God does test us, not to, for him to know what we can do, but for us to know what we can do. He tested Peter on the night when Jesus was being crucified. Peter had said emphatically, I will not deny you. But before, that's what he said before the test. But after the test, Peter went away and wept sorrowfully because he had failed the test. He had denied Jesus three times before the rooster crew or crow. Now, uh, in that wilderness experience, Jesus came through that test victoriously. And we, when we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, we will always come through victoriously also. The world appeals to the old nature, according to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, and tries to make God's commandments seem burdensome. Our victory is a result of faith, and we grow in faith as we grow in love. The more we love someone, the easier it is to trust them. The more our love for Christ is perfected, the more our faith in Christ is perfected also, because faith and love matures together. The word... Uh, overcome is a favorite, it appears, of John. And it seems that he uses it in uh, 
1 John chapter 2, verse 13 and 14 with reference to overcoming the devil. And he uses it uh, seven times in the book of Revelation to describe believers and the blessings they receive. And just a few of those verses in Revelation is chapter 2, verse 7, verse 11, verse 17, verse 26, and chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Uh, and there's some more. But he's not describing a special class of believers. But instead, he's using the word overcomers as a name for true Christians. Because we have been born of God, we are overcomers. We are told that a soldier in the army of Alexander the Great was not acting bravely in battle. When he should have been pressing forward, he was moving slowly in the rear and falling farther and farther behind. The great general, Alexander, approached him and asked him, what is your name, soldier? The man replied, my name, sir, is Alexander. The general looked him straight in the eyes and said firmly, soldier, get in there and fight or change your name. What is our name? Children of God, the born again ones of God, Christ-like. Alexander the Great wanted his name to be a symbol of courage. God's name carries with it the assurance of victory. To be born of God means to share God's victory. This victory is of faith, but faith in what? faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The answer, uh, the person who overcomes the world is the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, verse 5 in 1 John chapter 5. It is not faith in ourselves, but faith in Jesus Christ that gives us the victory. In the world ye shall have tribulations, but be of good courage, Jesus says. For I have overcome the world. John chapter 16, verse 33. Identification with Christ in his victory reminds us of several things that we have read so far. As he is in the letter of John. As he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. If one of those things is victorious, uh, we should walk in the light as he is in the light. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. And if we claim to abide in him, then we should conduct ourselves as he conducted himself. His children are to be on earth as he is in heaven. It's only necessary for us to claim uh, this wonderful position by faith and to act on it. When Jesus Christ died, we died with him. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, the New American Standard Version. When Christ was buried, we were buried with him. And when he arose, we arose with him. And therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death in order that Christ was raised from uh, uh, the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. Romans chapter four, verse, Romans chapter six, verse four. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21, uh, gives us further insight. Verse 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And this is the New King James Version. We're familiar with the, old, the uh, regular King, King James Version said, he is a new creature. And the verse goes on to say, uh, all things have passed away. 
and behold, all things have become new. Verse 18 said, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20 says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And verse 20 wraps it up by saying, for he made himself who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. When Christ ascended to heaven, we ascended with him and are now seated, remember, by faith and are now seated with him in heavenly places according to Ephesians chapter two, verse six, and we must believe the word of God or else we have nothing solid to believe in. Ephesians chapter two, verse uh, four through six says, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved. And verse six says, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And when Christ returns, we shall share in his exaltation. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed in him, with him in glory. That's Colossians chapter 3, verse 4, New American Standard Version. All these verses describes our spiritual position in Christ when, uh, we, when we claim this position by faith, we share his victory. So much... Uh, of our lives, we live as Christ-centered and Bible-based, hopefully. The main thing, which is the plain thing, is that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary, and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. And early, did I say early? The third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Power to free us from what held us. That was sin and the penalty of sin. We have been freed from that. We are being freed uh, from the power of sin. And we shall be freed from the presence of sin when Jesus returns. And we are going to have to close now. But... We'll continue uh, this perfected love builds uh, attitude of victory next week. Uh, so walk in the meantime, walk by faith and you'll walk in victory. Uh, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, being who you are in our lives. We ask that you would keep us submissive to your Holy Spirit that we may uh, be led by him to live lives victoriously, especially ex examples to, to those who have no hope in this world. In Jesus' victorious name we pray. Amen. Remember to mask up, practice social distancing, and wash your hands often. And just as... Uh, uh, in this world, we are dealing with people. None are perfect. God gave us the policemen, and God knows some of them are not perfect, just like we, his children, 
are not perfect. We are being perfected in his love. So we have no right to expect others to be perfect until we become perfect. And we will not become perfect until Jesus returns and catches us up and changes us from what we are to what we shall be. We have some good doctors that have our best interests at heart, are doing their best to provide uh, a cure or at least a vaccine for this virus uh, pandemic. Uh, so if you can, get the vaccine and uh, continue to practice uh, masking up and social distancing and washing often. And by faith, we'll get through this. But we must walk by faith, trusting in the Lord. Until next week, uh, continue to live victoriously in Christ Jesus. And we'll see you then. Bye-bye.